What's up, tech lovers? How are you all doing? I hope everything's great over there. Today on the channel, we have a device that on paper looks very promising, but let's see how it performs. And we're talking about the NINKEAR M8, a compact mini PC with the latest generation Ryzen 7 and an integrated graphics card. Ryzen 780M comes with 32 gigabytes of double data rate, five RAM and one terabyte of SSD storage. It's a small form factor with big specs, but the question is, in real use, will it live up to what it promises? Well, let's analyze it in detail and I'll share my experience with you. So I'll tell you everything here on TouchCraft. Well, this device we're going to look at today is from the manufacturer NINKEAR. It's a brand gaining ground in the mini PC market with products balanced in price and performance. This brand may not be as well known as Intel Next Unit of Computing or Mini's Forum, but more users are choosing it. The M8 arrives at a time when mini PCs are growing a lot in the market, especially for those who want power in a compact format, whether it's for work, for studying, or even for some light gaming. If you enjoy this content, like and subscribe to TouchCraft, where we always test the latest technology with no filters. Let's get to the unboxing. Before we start, I want to thank Banggood for sending us this product to test on the channel. And attention, because from September 1st to 15th, Banggood's anniversary promotions are happening with the best discounts between September 3rd and 10th. Also, if you still don't know about the Banggood app, I recommend it because new users can get up to 50% off just for downloading it. So here I leave you the image so you don't miss it. And with that said, let's get to the review. Well, a white box, pretty simple. They chose a format, as I mentioned, that's not very visual. Simply on the front, we have mini PC, home business, mini desktop computer, but we can't find the brand name anywhere. On the back, it's true that we do have a sticker that gives us a brief description of the product's features. Inside, the first box you open is like a phone, almost like an envelope. And inside we find a white box, also super simple, with no engravings or finishes of any kind. Let's check inside. We find the essentials. The well-protected mini PC, 120W power supply and 1 meter HDMI cable. And the manuals and the warranty. They don't include a Video Electronics Standards Association mount, which would actually be a useful extra to install it behind a monitor. And that's something it really needed, since almost all mini PCs usually don't include one. The presentation, as I said, is proper, very sober, well taken care of. It conveys a certain... it conveys. And it's ready to use right out of the box. Well, once it's out of its box. As always, let's start by talking about the physical design to learn about its dimensions. The Ninkia M8 measures 13x, 12.7x, 5.2 centimeters, and weighs around 510 grams. It comes in a metal chassis with good finishes at first glance. And on the top and bottom, we have plastic, which combines the dark gray and light gray colors quite well. On the surface, there's a finish with a groove resembling a Z or N showing Ninkier's style. Here too, the brand is embossed on both sides. We use a ventilation grill to form a tunnel, letting air flow in one side and out the other. At the bottom, there's a platform that lifts it slightly, allowing air to flow through the circular grill. And of course, a little pad, let's say a non-slip circle, so it can rest on it and not move around too much on the surface. Let's talk about the inputs it has, since they are only located on the front and the back. On the front, we find two USB Type-A ports, which are category 3.2, and a USB-C with video output. We're not talking about a USB-C 4 with all the features, a Thunderbolt or a super high-speed 4, but at least we have this type of USB format. There's also a 3.5 mm mini jack. In these times, it's really useful to have a direct input for headphones, a microphone, or whatever we want. And the eye-catching little button, this orange button for power, it's for turning the device on and off. There are plastic buttons that are pretty well covered and they have a small built-in LED so you know when it's on. If we go to the back from left to right, we find the barrel type power input. Two. 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports, one HDMI 2.0 and one DisplayPort 1.4. On the right, to finish, we also have a USB 3.2 and right below it a USB 2.0, both are type A. And of course, up here we have the radiator, the heatsink, also for the processor's heat, which will be located in this area here. A key feature on the back is support for connecting up to three screens at once. And for cooling, as I mentioned, there's an active fan with heat pipes. The noise it generates is about 38 and in practice, even under load. 
you can hear it but it's not annoying i mean it doesn't blow excessively here nor does it make any strange intermittent noises like the typical clicks you might hear in some devices so now let's move on to the section about performance and specifications first of all what does it have inside what's the processor in the ninkar m8 uh, well, it's a Ryzen 7 8745HS with 8 cores and 16 threads, a clock speed that goes up to 4.9 GHz. And as for graphics, it has integrated Radeon 780M graphics, which in this case are Radeon DNA 3 with 12 cores that go up to 2.6 GHz. As for RAM, it has 32 gigabytes of double data rate, 5 running at 5600 members in dual channel. For storage, we have a 1TB NVMe peripheral component Interconnect Express 3.0 SSD with speeds of up to 3500 MHz, 500MB per second read and 3050MB write. Uh, honestly, it's pretty good, even though both the RAM and the SSD are brands I wasn't familiar with at all. In terms of overall performance for daily use, the system responds quite well, handling multitasking, office browsing and some light photo editing. Uh, we'll see it easily. Uh, the SSD also makes booting and opening programs very fast. But when it comes to gaming, here I was a bit disappointed. Since we're talking about a device that, in general terms, based on its specs, I expected it to run all games very well. Let me share my experience. I've played AAA titles like Call of Duty and Modern Warfare 3. In multiplayer, it ran well for me at 30 to 40 FPS. It's playable at 1080p, but just barely. The textures, shadows, and so on aren't completely sharp. And in FIFA 25, it was practically impossible for me to run it, at least at 1080p. Which really surprised me because in theory it should run much better than Call of Duty since it's much less demanding in terms of graphics. But it seemed very very strange to me. As for World Rally Car, I also wanted to try a car game with limited graphics. You can play it but don't expect much more. So in summary, the experience with demanding games has been pretty limited. And I say this comparing it to other mini PCs I've tested here on the channel because it could be due to the combination of hardware or the basic configuration of drivers or processes. Honestly, it hasn't convinced me as much as I expected. I'm telling you, the brands they've used, like Kingsbar, are not brands that I know or have any information about. If you can handle these demanding titles, even with some limitations, it's clear that with less demanding games, like indie games and so on, you won't have any problems at all. These are games you'll be able to run smoothly. A frame rate that's actually quite acceptable. I'm telling you, these games can run between 30 and 50 frames per second. That's it. With these titles, it'll be much better. When it comes to video editing, it should be ideal for light editing, but with the latest DaVinci Resolve. Even with version 18, which I have installed, Directly, I got an error asking me to check the GPU drivers, something that has never happened to me with other computers, even less powerful ones. So this point is very important because it will definitely limit professional use if it doesn't match the software compatibility very well. I installed DaVinci, which I usually use, but it wouldn't even open. In terms of connectivity, the dual 2.5 gigabytes Ethernet ports are actually a pretty interesting extra. If you want to use it as a home, local or network attached storage server. It also has reliable Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. In my tests, I consistently got the maximum speed I pay for. It's 600 megabyte. Its only drawback is a single M2 slot, but it's easy to open. Just the screws, that's it. To get more capacity, replace the SSD or add extra drives. These have been the general aspects of a mini PC. There's not much more to say. Have you seen the performance tests? We've run Cinebench, Geekbench, Performance, and Disk Read tests. Honestly, it's the computer. You should see the data. It's well positioned for a mini PC, specifically a Chinese mini PC. And well, in theory, it's within the standard set for a mini PC that costs about 576 euros. More or less on their website. In conclusion, after testing, my opinion of the Ninker M8 is clear. It's a compact device with enough power for most uses, but with some important nuances. I'll highlight the positive part. It has a pretty capable modern processor, 32GB of RAM and a pretty fast SSD. It can also support three connected screens with good connectivity and the design is compact and quiet. Of course, we'll be able to get a maximum of 60 frames per second, we can't really ask for much more. So the downside is that when it comes to gaming, the performance is pretty limited for demanding titles. 
I'm telling you, I was expecting something a bit more sophisticated, something with a bit more power. I've used other computers with 16GB RAM and older processors that performed better. So, with the compatibility issue of DaVinci Resolve, the truth is it's been quite a surprising point, and it only has one M2 slot. Besides not mentioning that it doesn't come with the Video Electronic Standards Association mount, which I think is also necessary, for those seeking a minimalist all-in-one setup. As I said, the price is about 600, 700 euros depending on the marketplace. It's on their website at about 570, that seems fair for the central processing unit memory and storage it offers. But in my personal experience, this model might not be the right one, so it could fall a bit short or give you some trouble. If you need a PC for work, multitasking, home use, or light gaming, it's still a good option. That concludes the analysis of the NINK EAR M8. Let me know in the comments what you think about mini PCs in general and about this one in particular that you've seen today. If you see it as a real replacement, even better than a desktop, and that's it. Don't forget to subscribe to TechGround to stay tuned for all the reviews coming in the future. Of course, give us a like and turn on notifications so we can keep bringing the best content here to the channel. So that's all for now. Thank you for being here and I'll see you in the next TechGround video. See you soon.